What's happening there guys and welcome back to another great video on NBA Reloaded. While most people agree that Dwayne Wade was an exciting player to watch on the court, not many realize just how great he was during his time. One question that has occupied the minds of basketball fans for a long time now is just how good was prime Dwayne Wade? Well, you're about to get your answer right now. Number 5. What was Dwayne Wade like? Dwayne Wade was like the kid back in high school who mostly kept to himself and sat in the corner of the classroom minding his own business, but one day he shocked everyone with just how smart he was and got offered scholarships from Ivy League colleges because of his marvelous SAT score and astonishing GPA. But then, once he finally got into a top tier college, he never really got acknowledged by others for his smarts as everyone else around him was just as intelligent if not even more intelligent than him. This is an accurate analogy of what Dwayne Wade's career was like when he played with titans like Shaquille O'Neal and the one and only LeBron James who somewhat overshadowed just how good Dwayne Wade was at what he did. However, this doesn't change the fact that in his prime, Wade was one of the most entertaining players ever to watch on the court. He was a two-way player who could not only pull off a come-from-behind block just as gracefully as LeBron James, but also blitz through double teams like an unstoppable bullet. Although Wade may not make it to the list of the top 10 greatest players of all time, he still made his mark in the sport as an amazing player. Number 4. The Beginning of His Career Wade made his way into the NBA with a pretty decent track record. He was known to be a complete beast back at Marquette before he was picked 5th overall in the 2003 NBA Draft behind the great Chris Bosh, LeBron James, Darko Milicic, and Carmelo Anthony. Wade ended his junior season with a 21.5 point, 6.3 rebound, and 4.4 assist triple slash line that pushed the Golden Eagles to the Final Four in 2003, and in the process, he got a 29 point, 11 rebound, and 11 assist triple double to blow the Kentucky Wildcats out of the competitions, which were at that time the nation's top ranked team. It was at this time when Wade started to etch his place in the NBA. To put some more perspective on how he was doing, USA Today had the following to say about him. Wade, a 6 foot 4 inch early entry candidate who left school after his junior season, thrust himself on the NBA scouts' and personal executives' consciousness with a triple double, 29 points, 11 rebounds and 11 assists, and 4 blocked shots in the round of 8 versus Kentucky. Wade then went on to have a magnificent rookie season, averaging 16.2 points and 46.5% shooting and led his team, the Heat, to a surprise playoff berth like a ruthless king. The Heat won a total of 59 games and made their way to the finals of the Eastern Conference when they unfortunately lost to the Detroit Pistons in 7 games. During this time, Wade averaged 27.4 points per game in the postseason. Number 3. The Peak of His Career Without question, Wade's prime time had begun during the season of 2005-6. He was ranked at number 5 in the NBA with a stunning average of 27.2 points per game and according to many outlets, his 14.4 win shares were more than enough for 8. By the end of the season, Wade was voted second team All-NBA for the second consecutive year. If your jaw's on the floor right now, then you better pick it up as we're not done just yet. It was time for the playoffs. Miami skimmed past Detroit in the Eastern Conference Finals and encountered Dirk Nowitzki, who is the leader of Winshare, and the Dallas Mavericks in the NBA Finals. Wade led Miami back from a 0-2 upset for the series win and the franchise's very first title. He averaged a whopping 34.7 points, 7.8 rebounds, 3.8 assists, and 2.7 steals, as well as a 42.13 rebound wonder in Game 3. It was from then on that Dwayne Wade had become a superstar. Wade attempted 97 entire free throws in not more than 6 games. Overall, Wade's 33.8 PER is easily the best of any finals performer since the merger. While it seems strange to have somebody besides Michael Jordan in the top spot, the truth is Jordan never dominated a finals to this extent. At the time, many called Wade's performance Jordan-esque. It turns out they might have been selling him short, stated the former vice president of basketball operations for the Memphis Grizzlies of the NBA and current senior NBA columnist at The Athletic, John Hollinger. Number 2. The Ups and Downs 
Wade has also gone through more than a few ups and downs over the course of his career, like how his championship encore went. Everyone had high expectations of what Wade's championship encore would be like, but you know what they say, the bigger the expectations, the bigger the disappointment. Even though Wade followed up his finals MVP by speeding the NBA in PER with a decent 28.9 average, he had to sit out on 31 whole games because of injuries during which the Heat was knocked right out of the playoffs in the first round. The situation kept on deteriorating as Wade missed over 30 games once again due to having problems with his knee and when Wade did play, his performance wasn't up to mark. It would be safe to say that it was the worst it had ever been. His team, who had just won the finals a couple of years earlier, was now the worst game in the competition. Fortunately, after the upsets he faced in the 2007-8 season and the backlash that he faced, Wade got back up to his feet in 2008-9 and once again became the beast that he once was. Wade led the NBA in scoring with 30.2 points on 49.1% shooting, 7.5 assists, 1.3 blocks, and 5 rebounds. But the thing was, the rest of Wade's team was not playing nearly as good as he was, and due to this, the Heat got only a puny record of 43-39 and couldn't even progress through the first round. The season after this pretty much played out the same way, with Wade's game being decent, but his team holding him back and getting knocked out in the second round of the postseason. Number 1. The Legacy of Dwayne Wade when most people talk about who the best shooting guards of all time are, then the topic of conversation is almost always Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan, but it's about time that we start giving Dwayne Wade the recognition that he deserves. Wade was a three-time champion who was nothing less than a beast in the position he played, but for some reason, people seem to forget who he is. In an interview with Complex, Wade talked about his legacy and why he is satisfied with the career he left behind him. I like to look at it like this. When it comes to the great or GOAT conversation, our minds are triggered to see just one of these positions. We see one Michael Jordan and that's our GOAT because that's the era we grew up in, but then you have Kobe Bryant at the same position that could very well be a GOAT in his own right, but he's behind Michael Jordan in a lot of eyes, then you have the next guy and the next guy and so on. It's a long list of guys to talk about, said Wade. If I ever really cared about the praise of man to get me through or make me feel good about my career, it never would have been what it is. History speaks for itself. I'm in history. You can't mention basketball without mentioning me. You can't talk about being a champion without mentioning me. I did my part and I let my resume speak for itself, he added. Being a three-time champion, 13-time All-Star and an All-NBA player, Wade is without a doubt one of the most accomplished players in the history of basketball. And that's all we have for you guys in today's video. So what are your thoughts on Dwayne Wade and his prime? Let us know in the comments down below and if you enjoyed this video then let us know by smashing that like button and if you haven't done so already then don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on more videos from our channel in the future. Until next time, take care and goodbye.